live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Removing potential barriers to COVID vaccination, Amazon is now offering the shot to employees right where they work. Upset over a change in COVID safety rules, dozens of teachers at a local high school call in sick. But we begin with breaking news. The Justice Department has just announced federal hate crime charges in the death of Ahmad Arbery. The 25-year-old black man was out for a jog in Georgia last year when he was chased down by three white men, shot and killed. The men claim to have been making a citizen's arrest. The Department of Justice alleges the men confronted Arbery because of his race. Travis McMichael, his father, Gregory, and William Bryan are all charged with one count of interference of civil rights and attempted kidnapping. All three are already facing murder charges. More on that ahead here at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Let's move now to the teacher absences that force administrators at Gross Point North to scramble and take over some classrooms themselves. Teachers aren't happy about a change in the spacing out of students and in quarantine days required. Sean Lay delves into the issues and has reaction from parents and educators. Well, this was a big deal. 116 teachers district wide called in sick today. 47 of them teach at Gross Point North High School. I just know that there's a lot of students in the gym because they don't have teachers. 47 teachers not in their classrooms at Gross Point North today. Students waiting in the gym this morning as the administration got subs, even administration staff getting into classrooms to teach. Superintendent of Gross Point Schools, Gary Niehaus, he handled a TV production class and German class. Didn't really teach him. I, I basically sat with a group of kids and had a great conversation with them. Why did so many teachers stay home Monday? The board and administration say far too many kids, especially in high school, are in quarantine. They changed the quarantine days from 14 to 10 and say kids can be three, not six feet apart. The CDC says six feet is recommended for high school. One teacher who resigned two weeks ago blasted the board. You sit up on this stage, which by the way, I hope you enjoy the space you have here. This does not exist in our classroom. And many parents are fuming at teachers. One posting to Facebook, the only people you hurt today are kids. Niehaus called the situation disappointing. I was always hopeful that we could talk through this and make this thing work. The president of the teacher Teachers Union says sick days are in their contract, but it all comes down to this. We are feeling stressed and our teachers are, we hear multiple of really considering early retirements, resigning from the district. They don't feel heard and I, it breaks my heart. Will this happen again tomorrow? No one knows right now. The superintendent hoping to have a conversation with the teachers union president as soon as possible. In Gross Point, Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, more COVID headlines today. Detroit offering money to get residents vaccinated, and a judge has denied an attempt to end COVID testing for youth sports. That judge ruling the health director has authority to issue emergency rules. That's in response to the injunction attempt from Let Them Play Michigan. It comes as the state reports 4,371 new cases and 38 additional deaths. Detroit will start giving out $50 debit cards to anyone who signs a Detroiter up for a vaccination and brings them to the appointment. You must register, though, for the Good Neighbor program to be eligible. Right now, just 30% of Detroiters are vaccinated. I think there's probably about 50% of people in this city who say, I know I probably should get it, I'm nervous about it. I'm scared about it. If somebody really cared about me, if somebody reached out to me, maybe they're homebound, uh, uh, but took me, I would go. These are the folks that we have to reach. We are burying 100 of our neighbors in April. We don't want to bury another 100 of our neighbors in May. And so this is a time for you to reach out to people in your life, uh, do the right thing, and... Uh, be able to make a little bit of money out of it. And speaking of bringing vaccines to people, one of the nation's biggest employers is doing exactly that here in Metro Detroit. Kim DiGiulio takes us to the Amazon Romulus Fulfillment Center to show how they're giving their employees a chance to get the shot right where they work. While the COVID-19 vaccine is a lot more accessible now, you still have to seek out the vaccine. But now Amazon is allowing any employee to get that vaccine on site if they want one, and they can even do it while on the job. 
All Metro Detroit Amazon employees are now able to get the COVID-19 vaccine on site. And I'm already at work today, so I just got to come in and get the vaccine. It's a spot that they're familiar with. It's people that they're familiar with. And we really have a celebratory atmosphere here. Vaccinated t-shirts, balloons, even an I got vaccinated selfie station. Amazon employee Brandon Wisdom got his first shot here yesterday. A little sore on the left arm, but I'm feeling good. He's worked here for the past three years, so he's seen firsthand how this virus has affected people's ability to feel comfortable at work. All while Amazon's popularity has continued to rise. So we had more orders coming in when people aren't feeling safe to come to work. So we kind of had to work with that and find a medium to make sure we keep our customers satisfied as well as keep our associates safe. In the past year, Amazon has implemented more than 150 safety protocols and spent billions to keep employees safe. Now they can add on-site vaccinations to that list. If anybody feels uh, uncomfortable or they're just not ready to get vaccinated, nobody's pressuring anybody. There's no restrictions or stipulations. Brandon says seeing his coworkers get vaccinated gives him hope that we could be turning a corner for life to be back to how we once knew it. We can't predict the future. Of course, we can't predict the virus, but what we can do is prepare for it and make it the best, you know, the most comfortable experience possible. Another neat thing that they're doing is not just vaccinating Amazon employees, but also family members of those employees as well. In Romulus, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. All right, Kim, April is National Donate Life Month. Time to celebrate the generosity of those who have saved lives by becoming organ, tissue, bone marrow, and blood donors. But the people who have received those gifts are grateful every single day. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with one young man's story of hope and gratitude. Doc? Yeah, Kim and Devin. So Mohammed Al Suri is a Dearborn College student. He was born in the U.S., but he spent most of his childhood in Lebanon. He was 15 years old and still living there when his health took a sudden and frightening turn. I started getting sick out of nowhere. Um, I thought it was like a common cold, but then I noticed like um, uh, symptoms like shortness of breath and like consistent coughing, um, the inability to even sleep at night. Uh, these stuff started to worry both me and my family as well. At the hospital. We saw that my heart was enlarged. And at that point, um, we knew that my heart would not last long enough. Muhammad was soon suffering from heart failure. Doctors put him on a machine called ECMO to allow his heart and lungs to rest. I was in a coma uh, for 10 days. I needed a huge amount of blood, and if that amount of blood did not come in time, I would not have been able to survive. My family telling me they were posting on social media, they were calling family and friends, and my friends were calling friends. I. Their friends that I didn't even know, strangers were coming in trying to donate blood. Muhammad survived. Doctors helped him come to the U.S. and two months later, he received a heart transplant at Henry Ford Hospital. But I always keep the thought in my head that I'm going to use this second chance given by that person who was kind enough to give away their organs after they had passed away. And I will now give my all and give my best to use that organ in the best possible way I can. Muhammad is now a freshman at Wayne State. He's pre-med, majoring in neuroscience. He hopes to go into cardiology to help children and adults going through similar situations. I hope to use all that experience and knowledge into the medical field later on in the future. But he's not waiting to make a difference. Hey, I'm Mo, and yeah, that's me in the background. He's passionate about encouraging others to consider organ donation. Families do not sit down and have conversations with every single part of their family um, per se and talk to them what would you like to do in case an emergency happened later on and, and like you, we never know when anything would happen to us so it's important to um, let someone know having conversations with your family is the biggest part of organization he hopes more people will become blood donors too a thing that people sometimes consider small was actually a huge part of my journey and it really boosted me up into um, a healthier life. A life he wants to use to help others. Instead of seeing myself doing like this small uh, part in my community, now I see myself doing something much larger. And to those who've given him this second chance. I think the only thing I could say is uh, thank you and I owe you a lot. Now, Muhammad says he's also very grateful to the doctors and all of the medical staff members who've helped him on this journey. And we certainly look forward to seeing him accomplish those goals. Back to you. Indeed, absolutely. And the need for blood is constant for people battling a wide range of illnesses. And that is why we have teamed up uh, with Gardner White. 
And the Red Cross for blood drives happening tomorrow at Gardner White stores in Ann Arbor, Auburn Hills, Brighton, Canton, Macomb, and Waterford. And on Friday in Novi, Rochester Hills, Taylor, and Warren, appointments are required. You can find all of the details on the health page at clickondetroit.com. There's also a link to join the Michigan Organ Donor Registry. And we certainly hope you will. And hats off to Gardner White to, uh, for remaining, remaining uh, committed to this cause for so many years and even more so during this pandemic. <clears throat> Tonight, a new Help Me Hank scam alert reveals how thieves are targeting Michiganders collecting unemployment. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester with an important warning from Michigan's Attorney General. Hank. These scammers, they're reaching out to thousands of people via text message. The goal is simple to get your personal information. These scammers using an old trick to get you. Those receiving benefits from the Michigan Unemployment Insurance Agency may receive a text message that appears legit. It claims to be from UIA and warns of some changes being made. You're encouraged to click the link. However, if you do, you may be giving up your personal information. Michigan's Attorney General releasing this statement. At a time when so many people are struggling financially, bad actors are using scam text and websites that mimic government unemployment insurance benefit websites. These sites trick people into thinking they're applying for or certifying their UIA benefits. Instead, they wind up giving scammers their personal information. And there's also a similar scam with these high-tech thieves contacting you via email. The bottom line is if you have a question regarding your unemployment benefits, contact UIA directly. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Okay, Hank. Well, we've still got a chance of scattered storms tonight. Hi, Ben. Yeah, guys, we got wet areas around the uh, area tonight. Also, tomorrow we get another big push of rain. And then Friday we start to dry out as we head into a mostly dry weekend. We'll look at all of that in just a few minutes. Believe it or not, the pandemic has made it hard for a group of people just to basically communicate. That story coming up. The longer the COVID-19 virus spreads, the more likely it is to morph into dangerous variants. That's why experts say it's important to get lots of people vaccinated as quickly as possible to slow the spread and lessen the chances for the virus to change. Vaccination will help end the pandemic. Get the facts at clickondetroit.com.